TAVR has been one of the most exciting developments in interventional cardiology in the last several years. And it is also now one of the best followed between uh, a registry that the STS and the ACC have. And today we're talking about a paper in the November 2014 issue of JAK Interventions. It is Outcomes After TAVR. It is a comparison of the randomized partner trial with a non-randomized continued access registry. For this, I'm with William F. Firon, who is Stanford University Medical Center, where he is associate professor and the uh, director of interventional cardiology. This is a topic that we really are following as closely as possible. There is a, a ACC uh, registry also. The partner trial, we all know about that. Tell us a little about the, the registry. Yeah, so the uh, uh, continued access registry was a unique part of the overall partner trial. Um, partner trial included two cohorts, 1A, which were the high-risk patients that were randomized to either surgery or transcatheter uh, TAVR, and then the partner B, which were the inoperable or extreme risk that were randomized to medical therapy or TAVR. After the um, randomized trial was completed, the FDA granted continued access, and over a thousand patients received transfemoral TAVR as part of that continued access registry. Um, and we were interested in comparing the outcomes in that group to the 415 transfemoral TAVR cases that were included in both of the partner 1A and 1B randomized control trials. And you've got about a thousand patients now that you've got follow-up on? A thousand in the continued access with transfemoral, yeah, compared to the 415 in the. I thought it was rather surprising. What did you find? So there were some, uh, first of all, some key baseline differences, um, which are interesting. In the continued access registry, the patients were significantly older, about 85 years old compared to 84 in the randomized trial. Um, but they had a significantly lower STS score. Um, it was around in the high 10% range versus the mid 11% in the randomized trial. And this was likely because there was less uh, peripheral arterial disease and cerebrovascular disease in the continued access access. And that may have been because of increased availability and access to the transapical route. So those patients that might not have been uh, receiving that in the randomized trial got that in the continued access registry. So those were some key baseline differences um, that we saw. Over a period of time, what did you see? Because you've now got one year follow-up. <clears throat> Correct. So there were um, some other interesting procedural differences uh, to highlight. The um, uh, shorter uh, procedure time with the continued access, so implying that there was a learning curve. Um, fewer patients received post dilatation of the valve after it was deployed in the continued access, and that may have been, again, because of um, uh, greater knowledge that post dilatation might uh, affect cerebrovascular outcomes that became available after the randomized trial was completed. Um, and then there were some important uh, differences in uh, major adverse events at uh, both 30 days and one year. The uh, continued access patients had significantly lower uh, vascular complications, about 50% lower, as well as major bleeds. So decreased from about 15% down to about 7% um, uh, at 30 days. And probably the most striking difference was that the mortality at one year was significantly lower in the continued access patients. It was 19% compared to 25% um, in the uh, randomized control trial. In addition, the uh, rate of um, stroke, all stroke, tended to be lower. It wasn't statistically significant, but about 6% versus about 9%. I and mean, I thought it was stunning. You've got you know, the outcomes in the registry. You've got about 1,000 patients, and they were equivalent or superior in terms of outcomes when compared to the, the registry, why? Yeah. That wasn't anticipated, at least right. I didn't. Right, it was very reassuring, I agree, uh, to see that the very positive results that were seen in the randomized controlled trial could be translated to a much larger registry. And not only were they equivalent, but like you say, better. And I think there are a few potential explanations. One is um, increased operator experience. So in the randomized controlled trial, uh, the 27 sites, the average uh, was about uh, 15 or so patients per site enrolled. and the continued access, it was about 40 patients per site. So there was clearly more experience. I think the patient selection had improved. We learned uh, that there are some patients that it's clearly futile to do anything in those patients. And that may help partly explain why the STS risk was a little lower um, and also explain the improved outcomes. The increased availability of the transapical approach also um, may uh, because it shuttled some of those patients uh, away from transfemoral. So all of those things probably contributed to the better outcomes. 
Now, you have longer follow-up, at least it hasn't been reported out yet, but how do your results fare with, say, the STS-ACC registry? Yeah, so that, that group of patients is, uh, at least based on STS score, lower risk. Um, their average STS is in the 7% range. Uh, with the continued access, like I said, it was in the mid-10% range. Um, the 30-day outcomes aren't that different. We're still waiting for the one-year uh, outcomes to be reported for the STS. But our one-year outcomes compare favorably to other registries, like the source uh, registry in the UK that has gone out to one year. Um, uh, the source XT registry, so. So what's your bottom line take home message? I think the take home message from uh, this study is that um, the excellent outcomes achieved in the randomized control trial can also be achieved in a much larger uh, continued access registry with even improvements uh, probably related to uh, improved patient selection and operator experience and that as this continues to these uh, factors continue to improve we should hopefully expect even better outcomes down the road. And you're going to continue following these patients, right? The registry yes. continues. Yep. In the, uh, the November issue of Jack Interventions, it's a paper by uh, Firon and all, and its outcome after transfemoral transcatheter aortic valve replacement, and it's the partner and the, uh, the non-randomized continued access registry trial. Please look for that. And for CardioSource World News, please look for our coverage from the AHA meeting and more. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.